Hey everyone, John from Bike Kid Advisor. So something came up this week, it was kind of interesting. It, it is something that does apply to bike fit, but it's not something you hear about very often. It has to do with uh, finding out gear ratios or, or comparing gear ratios between different bikes. So I thought I'd just go over a really basic way of doing this. It is by far not the most technical way. It's just really simple. Uh, it's not, it's not going to give you necessarily the exact gear inches. There are other formulas for that. There's a ton of good resources for that online. There's even some calculators where you can just plug in things. But when I just need to do a quick calculation to help somebody figure out what gearing to choose, this is what I do. So this came up because I had a client in kind of a unique situation. He uh, is getting a new bike. He has a, it's a road bike and he has a standard, you know, a, a double uh, front chain ring and a, and a cassette, obviously. Um, and he's just got a compact uh, chain ring on the front and uh, an 1129 cassette. And he's in the unique situation where he's looking at actually going to a one by 12 setup, a single front chain ring. Now this isn't something you see terribly often yet in the in the road bike end. You see it a little bit on cross bikes. You definitely see it on the mountain bike. Of course, there's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, of those nowadays, um, almost predominantly actually. But you can do this same sequence no matter whether you're going from um, as this person was a double to a single front chain ring. Um, or maybe a triple to a double, or from one double to another double, like per, for instance, from a, uh, a, a standard crank set to a compact, or from a compact to a mid-compact. And uh, so th this can be useful just to help you figure out like, okay, am I giving up anything? Or what am I sacrificing? What am I compromising on when I go from this type of gear setup to this, this completely new one? So just know that this can be applied to a, a lot of different things. So what this rider was wanting to do is he had his existing bike was, uh, we'll just list it as his old bike here. It had the front chain ring was compact. It was 5034 on the front. And he, his cassette on that bike was an 1129. Okay, so when I look at when we're doing these types of things is the easiest way to start is to just find out what is your high end and what's your low end. And to keep this straight, I'm just going to refer to them as your your downhill gear, you know, what you would pedal going downhill and your uphill gear because low and high and big and small tends to confuse people just because on the on the um, on on our you know quote unquote our high gear you know often it confuses people because then you have a you're in the small cog in the back and it so we'll just go with downhill and uphill gearing that seems to be something people can understand pretty easily um, so there's no confusion so what we need to figure out is first his downhill gear okay and that's actually going to be this 50 match to the 11 so it's a 50 by 11. And then his uphill or his climbing gear is going to be this 34 in the front and the 29 in the back. So here's where I start. We just do this really basic. We're just going to take 50 divided by 11, 50 divided by 11, and I just multiply by 27 just to get a rough estimate here. And then I'll take the uphill gear, 34 divided by 29, also times 27. Okay. Okay. So this equals about... 123. You can sort of call that gear inches. It's not exactly, but like I mentioned, this is not the most technical way of doing it, but it's just, we're just dealing with ratios here. So we're just trying to get some numbers that we can compare. And this one equals 31.7. Okay. So now we have our uphill and our downhill. You know, you, you can sort of think of this, again, this is not 100% accurate. You can sort of think of this as in this gear, every time you make one complete revolution of the pedals, the bike is moving forward almost 32 inches. In this gear, it's moving 123 inches forward. Kind of gives you an idea of what's going on. So now we need to figure out, this person, like I said, was going for a one by 12. And we were really trying to figure out what front chain ring size we needed in order to, uh, because we had just certain cassettes that we're allowed. So we we're trying to maintain as much of this as we could, um, but we can factor in, you know, whether he uses this end more or if he uses this end more, which would he, I guess, which would he miss more if he had to do without. So uh, the way we do this is for his new one. So again, for, we'll just keep it square like this. So downhill, we don't know what his chain ring size. That's what we're trying to solve for. We'll just call that Y. 
Okay, but we know that his big, the big cog on this new cassette is actually a nine. Okay, so it's a whatever by nine. So we're gonna we're gonna write this as y over nine. Okay, times twenty seven, and we want to get as close to one hundred twenty three as we can. So we're gonna find out what that is. We're gonna do the opposite here. So we'll call this one z by twenty nine. Um, it's not times 29, I'm sorry, it's just, it's a, it's the gear you're in is, is this one by the, the 29 tooth. Or excuse me, we're not going to do the 29. We actually are going, because this is, we're dealing with an unknown, but the, the cassette we're dealing with is a 9 to 32. And so we're going to do 9 32. So we do this, we do Z over 32 times 27 equals, we'll just call this 32. So now we're just gonna solve for Y and for Z and see where that gets us here. Okay, so on this one we get 41. Okay, so this one we get 38. Okay, so now in order to maintain his climbing or his uphill gear, we would need to have a 38 tooth front chain ring. And to manage the same downhill gear, we need a 41. This isn't too bad, we're actually not too far apart. And so real simply, all, what we could do is we could plan on him. Let's say he was actually, he, he didn't really use this uphill gear. He didn't default to this 29 that often. It was very infrequent, but he did use this quite a bit. Um, well, then we might air closer to the four. So we might go with a, we might go with a 40 in that case. But if he used every bit of this climbing gear and he wished he almost had one more, um, and, 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 you know, maybe this didn't get used that often or it wasn't that important to him. Maybe we do, then we, then we definitely want to err closer to the, to that 38, um, if that were an option. So this, again, this is not giving us exact gear inches, but it just gives us a way that we can compare and, 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 and figure out what we're losing and what we're, or what we're not losing. And this can absolutely be critical on a bike because if, if your gearing is not going to support the way that you normally ride, you're going to fundamentally pedal that bike differently. Your, your posture is going to be different. You're going to have to either stand up or sit down more. So this does have pretty large implications, implications, excuse me, for bike fit. Um, what this doesn't take into account and what be then kind of the next step, um, it's a little beyond going into this video, but we then have to, you know, decide if, you know, if the person, if we're still on the fence about doing this, one thing to know about going, especially to fewer front chain rings, whether it's from three to two or two to one, is to understand what are the steps in between gears. So, like when he's when he has a one by twelve here, yes, there are there's one more cog in there because it's a twelve speed instead of eleven. But we also need to consider that he doesn't he just doesn't have as many gears. He's got twelve combinations versus when he had the two by eleven, he had twenty two. So the steps in between gears are going to be bigger and uh, not everybody likes that. Some people when, especially when they're climbing and they're on a false flat or something like that, they'll, they, they, they like to have very small steps in between gears so that they can really fine tune their cadence. Other people, it doesn't matter. They don't really, you know, it doesn't bother them that much. So it's just, that's just one more thing to kind of consider when you're reducing the number of chain rings and reducing the number of, of gears. So let me know if you've struggled with this, if this is something that you have, um, you've kind of had to do, or maybe you didn't do and you wished you had, um, put those down in the comments below. Um, I do have a new program out. I'll put a link to it down in the description below too. And it is just on how to buy the right size bike. You gotta have the right size bike before you can get the right bike fit. So. And uh, that's all I have for this one, everyone. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.